this edition of Intelligent Video Today from Intelligent Research. I'm your host, Steve Vonderhaar. Joining us on the episode is Nicholas Hagen, co-CEO over at Hive Streaming. Welcome, Nicholas. Thank you, Steve. It's great to be here. Uh, it's great to have you and uh, really looking forward to learning more about the, the current status of Hive. Uh, we've known you forever as a uh, provider of uh, distribution products uh, used uh, to help facilitate uh, the shuttling of video on corporate networks. Uh, but tell us about uh, where Hive has been and where you, where you are positioning yourself moving forward. Yeah, sure. I can start with a little bit of history here. So Hive started off already in 2007 as a semi-research initiative and with an idea on some very powerful algorithms for distributing video. At the beginning, it was uh, for the uh, the intention was to to do it for the over-the-top providers, but quite, uh, pretty soon we realized that. Uh, we thought that the bigger problem and more interesting problem to solve was to distribute this video um, uh, behind the firewall in corporate networks. It's a very difficult problem to solve. You can do it with multicast and hardware, uh, but we had this idea that we wanted to have a software-only, zero configuration, self-adapting system um, that needed minimal of, of setup that just works, you know, pour a bit of hive in the network and suddenly video works. And that's where we're coming from. It took quite a few years to develop these algorithms and it was a lot of researchy type work and PhDs and appearing on stage, explaining this cutting edge technology. But around 2013, we started to get our first customers and, and it didn't take off for real until 2016, 2017, when we started to get big enterprise customers for real. And uh, I joined the company already, I was a consultant to the company already in 2007, but I didn't start full time as co-CEO and COO until uh, January of 2017. And it was the perfect stage to start for me because that's when it really took off. And there were, were a lot of interesting, there was so much innovation in the air, such difficult, technology that we had to bring to the customer in the most easy to use way. And that was the primary challenge. But already in 2019, we realized that we're not an ECDN company. We're not a distribution company. That's where our roots are. And we, we are an innovation company trying to help customers succeed with business transformation, really, with the use of video. So that led to, uh, of course, the thinking about what should we do next? once we have permeated our success on the distribution front, what's the next piece to deliver to the outside world here? Yeah, so we and, started- and really all, you're, no? Yeah, we had seen uh, uh, Hive as, maybe seen in the marketplace as a, a one product company uh, delivering content distribution solutions for use on enterprise networks. Uh, uh, but you're evolving past that. Tell us a little bit about the journey that you've been on uh, to move beyond the world of, of ECDN provider. Exactly. And, and to be to be very clear about this, our our distribution technology, our machine learning, self-adapting algorithms is the roots, is the foundation that we stand upon. It's something that's really, really hard to build. And uh, also you can build it in very different ways. And we are proud to say that we think that we found the most efficient way to do that. However, those are our roots. We consider them our roots now. Very early on, we, we got famous for the depth of our analytics platform that was initially built uh, for our own developers and researchers to prove how well uh, our, our algorithms worked. It's pretty difficult to measure distributed systems that way, but we, 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 our customers saw the analytics and we made it more customer friendly. And of course, so from that point on, we were a two product company. We had the distribution and we had powerful uh, analytics. Yeah, so, so, so we, tell we, us a little yeah. bit about uh, those analytics capabilities. In, in the past, it was pretty much silent testing, uh, trying to figure out what uh, a network might, how a network might perform during a webcast. But uh, uh, when we talk analytics today, it goes way beyond that uh, from a Hive perspective. Uh, uh, where yeah. are some of the areas where you think uh, that uh, Hive can really make analytics and measuring network performance really shine? Yes, so around, uh, we're actually launching our new products with going from a single product 
to a multi-product company for real this autumn. And we will have two different analytics products. We will have two different uh, optimization or, or distribution ECDM products. But we also will have two other products. And I can talk a little bit about the different ones. Um, but our main goal here is to position ourselves as we can offload the network. That gives us a lot more space to do other things in the network. Our end goal is not only to reduce traffic on the network, it's to, to reduce that traffic in order to further optimize the video, to increase the quality and reach of that video, to support our customers in their business transformation in many different ways. So these six products all contribute to increasing the quality and reach of streaming video uh, in order to increase or maximize the alignment, the strategic alignment, and the employee engagement that you wish to get from your video streaming, basically. Uh, so that's our overarching position, positioning. We want to maximize the video experience in different ways. And we will launch six different products uh, to, to assist with that in different ways. And I guess uh, the analytics being able to measure that type of form performance also paves the way for you to go out and fix some videos during uh, events when they're taking place. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your product that you're calling Control and uh, how can it be used to manage the delivery of video uh, during a live event? Great, yeah. So we're very proud to very soon be able to launch uh, our newest product, which we think is an unprecedented type, groundbreaking type of functionality, which uh, we haven't set the final name, but we, it goes by the name of Hive Control. It's a real-time product that uh, is for the during the event. And for the event manager and network and IT admins, who are responsible for that video being delivered flawless. We all know uh, what it's like. Streaming video is a complex ecosystem, a chain of events where the webcasting is created in the, in, in the camera room, it's being moved to the CDN, down into the different network sites, over the network, into the, the, the computer and into the, to the audience and to the, to the viewer's mind, basically. And we, know that the cost of a failed event is tremendous. It's not only the cost of, of that time being taken up from the employees and all of the cost of preparing the event. It's also the, the mental cost of the employees feeling like, is my company able to do this thing or not? What type of company am I working for? So we know the stakes are high. And control the event or the high control product actually provides peace of mind for the network admin. They will be notified for events of the size that they are interested in uh, controlling. Uh, either they can watch the event <laughs> from scratch. If it's a CEO town hall, we anticipate the users doing that. But if it's a semi-big event, they will only get notified if something's going wrong. And if it's going wrong, you will get actionable insights on exactly what is going wrong. And in the most cases, we can also provide a feature where they can try to, to actually alleviate that problem because it, it, it becomes a massive failure. And I, I won't go into the technical details of this, but our unique position between the end user, the viewer, the network and the data we have and the video player from, the, from our uh, enterprise video partners makes us in a position that we can control this and actually fix stuff before they go wrong. And we know that our customers really want that feature because it's pretty much, you know, when, when you start an event, you just pray that nothing goes wrong. And this we think is the first attempt to, to actually provide some control in after the event has started. So speaking of peace of mind for network administrators, uh, there's also uh, a way to prepare for an event ahead of time. What are some of the things you're doing in that realm? Yes, I'm glad you were asking. Um, another new product that we're building is going by the name of Hive Secure, uh, which is trying to secure the network to prepare for any type of video. Uh, some viewers might already be aware of the fact that we have an old product that's called silent testing, which is a way where you can ask Hive to perform a test uh, to pressure test the network for an important event uh, and run video uh, for real without anyone knowing to see do we have any bottlenecks. So the new product is built upon that core framework and capability, but we're adding so much more on top of that. We will provide a control room for network and IT administrators and event managers to test very different types of scenarios, finding um, problematic sites and even having recurring tests to make sure that you can test the network at many different points and only get notified when something is wrong. And also actionable insights on configurations that you might want to do in different network sites to ensure 
that video will run smoothly on the day of the event. So control and secure are tightly connected, but one is there when you have peace and when you are calm and you have the possibility to test everything beforehand. And control is during the event when you have this very stressful situation of actually running the event live. So they're interconnected, but from slightly different angles. So when we've looked at Hive before, it's been a dream for network administrators. Uh, you really resonate with those who are really responsible for managing a corporate network. But uh, with these added products, uh, do you see the, the base of decision makers that you appeal to or resonate with uh, begin to expand, uh, broadening your set of potential customers? I think that's a great question, and we've been thinking a lot about that. So we're thinking about who really needs our product. If you, if you look from the top, it's actually the CEO who is in need of business transformation, change management, and getting their message through, right? We don't think we're going to have the CEO signing any of our contracts, but in, in forward-looking organizations, the realization that business transformation is is, is paramount for the company's success and continued growth, there will be a culture among the whole organization to promote anything that would facilitate that business transformation. So we think that most of our products will still be the IT department signing uh, because it's still technical foundational features like that. But we think we will have an ICP, an ideal customer profile, where, where, where the customer is aware of the importance of very high quality during the, 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 the transmission of video. Because we believe that you have to see the thin lines next to a person's eyes uh, to be able to believe truly what they're saying and tr truly understand the strategy that, that, that the company is talking about, right? That said, so for, for, for forward-looking organizations, it will, the CIO or the IT manager will tell their employees, like, you need to find products that enhances this signal. So that will still, in many cases, be the same persona or the same role that we're working uh, with already today. But we think it could expand. And we know that one of our new analytics products called Comms Analytics will probably be uh, 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 even more relevant to communications people or digital transformation people or work digital workplace people, because they will be interested more in the engagement aspect of things. Uh, but I think there's a vast difference in how different companies are actually organized. In some places, the IT is taking much more of a forward-looking business role. And in other organizations, it's the comms or business side of things that actually do that. So we take the customers one by one to see who's really in need of these products. No, it'll be great to see that a expanding set of customers for Hive. Now, one last question. Can't let you go uh, from Intelligent Video today without asking about artificial intelligence and its impact on the development of video platforms. How do you envision uh, that AI-infused capabilities are going to influence the Hive product roadmap in the intermediate or long term? Yeah. So we have a long history of utilizing machine learning uh, in our products and self adapt adaptation for our agents and our clients and our browser-based clients to take decisions distributedly um, about how to distribute the video. So it's deeply ingrained in our culture to always look for that. However, the new products, I think it's always a good idea to start from a heuristic approach of, 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 of um, programmatically inserting our 20 years of knowledge on how these problems are best resolved in the code. And over time, as we get more and more big data, we will apply machine learning and AI principles on this data to start uh, creating recommendations for our customers based on, on pure machine learning and stuff like that. But we see it as a transition from coding in our, our, our own human knowledge and then moving more and more over to machine learning and AI for these products. Excellent. Well, uh, Nicholas Hagen, co-CEO over at Hive Streaming, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Thank you so much, Steve. Glad to be here. And we thank you and our audience for tuning in to today's episode of Intelligent Video Today. For more insight from thought leaders in the intelligent video space, go to our YouTube channel right down there and uh, click to subscribe to get more insight from uh, industry thought leaders like Nicholas Hagen. For Intelligent Research, I'm Steve Vonderhaar. Thanks for your time.